come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie so review excited. podcast that comes your way every Saturday night, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for a total <laughs> world domination you can help us with that by zipping on over to wherever you found us and give us that like or star rating or review because all of that stuff helps us get found by other folks like you who are into the same stuff you're into which is the same stuff that we're into ironically funny that works huh (laughs) uh we're all freaky that's right join the freak show family these are the internet radio superstars. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Sean. What did we watch tonight? <laughs> uh, we watched 2010's A Nightmare on Elm Street. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to have to be just right up front <laughs> with our feelings on this? I, I mean, get, listeners at home, put your feet up on the couch. This is your therapy session to get oh, yeah. out the hurt of yeah. this movie. Uh, oh. Sometimes the show is uh, it, it comes for them if they're ready or not, or whether they like it or not. Yeah, if they like it or not. We're gonna work through this together, though, guys. Yeah. We'll we'll, we we'll come thoughts, out different people. Questions, comments, concerns. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I guess it's like anything else. You kind of you see a movie. I mean, I saw this when it first came out in 2010. Yep. And haven't seen it since. I saw it in the Same. theater. That's the reason I brought it tonight. Is because I. I don't know how this popped up, or uh, it's probably some retrospective on some website, but it's just like, it's been 10 years. I saw this once. I don't remember it. Uh, I, know, <laughs> I, I know I remember not liking it. You remember the residual feeling, right? Yeah, but, yeah, but it was it was dull. Right. After 10 years, very dull. Like, I don't, like I don't even think of it. I blocked it out of yeah, my it's mind. Gone. Honestly, this movie kind of went quietly, right? Like, it, it came out... No one liked it, and then it just kind of quietly and we just, disappeared. We're all going to make sure we yeah. never remember yeah. this. Was this. Like the, the memory suppressed in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, is that is what this happened movie to us? as bad as child molestation? We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, so this movie comes to us from the producing team of Platinum Dunes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Platinum Dunes was a company that was famously headed by Michael Bay. We all know who Michael Bay is, of course, master of cinematic mayhem, who got it in his head one day. I'm going to remake all of them. Yeah, well, he started with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yes, in 2003, right? I think there was, yeah, in 03. And the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, actually, okay, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake is I think responsible for like without that movie, you wouldn't have Batman begins and you wouldn't have a uh, casino Royale because Texas chainsaw massacre in 2003 gave Hollywood because of its success, its success. Yes. Taught Hollywood that, Hey, you can actually go back to these things that are like still in recent memory. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause it used to be, even though, it's not uh, okay. In, in my mind, it was always like, you know, we were remaking in, in the eighties and whatever eighties and nineties, they were remaking movies from like a hundred fucking years ago. But in reality, they were remaking fifties movies and the gap between them was about what? 30 years. Yeah. Right. But you know, but now it seemed like, okay, in the 2010s, now we're or in the two thousands, we're remaking movies from less than 20 years ago, mm-hmm. you know? So they, well, I guess Texas Chainsaw was 74, but then they started doing, what was it? Platinum Dunes did. uh, The Hitcher. uh, Right. Uh, The Amityville Horror. Yes. Right. Friday the 13th. Yes. And then this one. Didn't they do a couple other ones too? Uh, I was was just looking it up, but I don't think the other ones were necessarily remakes. Is The Unborn a remake? No. So yeah. That was also shot in Chicago. Like this movie, they did Amityville mm-hmm. Horror, The Unborn, and Nightmare on Elm Street in Chicago mm-hmm. because they got like tax breaks. Mm-hmm. And then, and then in 2013, it goes to The Purge, and The Purge took off, which I was, was say, a co-production with Blumhouse. Mm-hmm. Didn't yep. this kill? Yeah, it did. Because did there, yeah. there was nothing between after this. There was nothing until 2013. Yeah. So yeah, well, they did. A, they did a Quiet Place. That's their new one. And a Quiet All Place right. was a success. And like mm-hmm. so. Platinum Dunes is actually, and yes, we're going to call you out. <laughs> this is Brian Fuller and Andrew Form, right? Mm. They're the actual guys who run Platinum Dunes. And based on their output, right? Mm-hmm. Like, 
who are these fucking people who make these these producers? It's like they come out of film school. I imagine they like they've seen movies kind of in their bro college days or whatever, and they're like, yeah, you know, that's probably worth something. We should. So is Ryan this. Turk the uh, now equivalent of these guys? Yes. I think, but yeah, because Blumhouse is the new Platinum Dunes. But at least to Turk's credit, I actually feel like he is and does know his horror stuff. He does. Yeah. He, is, yeah. he does. Well, yeah. These sure. guys. Less so. They are yeah. aware. They are like. I don't think they care men. to know either. Yeah, I think business, that's also that it's it, money yeah. and it's money that comes first. It I is think. It's like we can make money out of this. Yeah. 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 And they, which I mean, if you're producing shit, is what you want. Right. It's part of it, but that that can't be your only drive. It's like, well, we can make some money off that. Let's do it. But it feels like that is the only thing that was their only drive. Like, uh, yeah, because well, that's what I'm absolutely, saying. this movie also reinforces like, oh, I mean, when it just feels like all these remakes and you know, I mean, basically the current state of uh, Hollywood. Unfortunately, it's mm. like we have an IP, right, mm. an intellectual property. You can't just sit there. And we can take it and somehow mine it and turn that fucking thing into gold. And we got to keep these things going for as long as we can. And, you know, beyond their, uh, I mean, like originally they were like some kind of, uh, uh, not even a cultural thing. It was like a story. It was a, you know, a thing. And then now we're just milking that as much as we can Mm -hmm. forever and ever and keeping yep. the corpse alive. Looking at you, Spider-Man franchise. Yeah. How, what, we're on eight movies now? Star, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Star Wars is a little more understandable than eight Spider-Man movies in like fifteen years. Yeah. <sighs> Are you exhausted? I'm exhausted. That's been rebooted three times. I, I, I'm, I'm so depressed. Yeah. <laughs> After said, watching put this, put your feet up, Colin. It's time to you know get comfortable on the couch. Well, okay, so um, you know, I mean, y- you have all these films that these guys remember. I mean, cause you know, I mean, I guess that's a thing, you know, uh, you grow up watching them yeah. and then you're finally in a position where, you know, Hey, we can go out and see like what's available. And they, I, I just, I see it all as like these back room deals and things are being signed and probably um, nice corporate boardrooms or offices. Some nice, some and nice stuff clean. Like yeah. Some sanitized yeah. boardroom where they're just, uh, where this, the the memory of Nightmare on Elm Street doesn't belong in that room. Right. Yeah, and they're yeah. just signing contracts and yeah. making deals and shit to fuck with this stuff. Yep, and they're just seeing dollar signs yeah. in their head. And this is the primary motivating factor we think in the creation Gotta of be. all of these movies. Gotta be. Um. So they. Uh, I'm they surprised say, they just didn't have Marcus Nispel direct all of them. I was gonna say, can we talk about who directed this movie? Because there, I there's a lot to unpack. Yeah, we didn't. With who we didn't mention his movie. name, Samuel Bear. Yeah. Yeah, Best which you would know for, from uh, "Smells Like Teen Spirit." Yeah, oh, yeah. and uh, Green Day's um, "Wake Me Up When September Ends" short film music and video. And the Boulevard uh, of Broken Dreams. Literally any top forty music video in the last twenty years. Yeah, probably. Marilyn yep. Manson. Yeah, got a lot of. Uh, well, um, uh, on to be Justin fair, he's Timberlake. done a lot of iconic music. Videos. Oh yeah, he's a good music video director. Right. He's what? a really good. You look up his resume, and it's yeah. like "Smells Like Teen Spirit." Man, that's yeah. still iconic. Yeah. Like at least uh, I would say dozens, but it's mm-hmm. more than that. Any other and, movies? And no. Commercials. Literally, this is Nothing. the only movie. Yeah, because I think he had a bad experience. I mean, he was roasted over the fire when this movie actually came out. It was yep. not well received by anyone who saw it. No. Critics or audiences. But I it think- It was su- success- financially successful. Big time. Well, because yeah. it's a nightmare on Well, right, street. yeah. Right. By, based on that name alone. Okay. So I'm going to tell you a fact that's going to depress you even more. Oh, Are you Jesus. ready for this? Yahoo- had a poll recently which of these horror movies should be remade no. and the number one thing is a nightmare oh, on elm street no. today today that doesn't surprise me <laughs> at all not a good idea look how look how successful the it movies are right yeah. that's like the closest thing we have right now yeah pennywise is su- the new freddy exactly Kruger. oh that's so. the first time we've said his name Freddy Krueger. Oh, yeah. Fred, <laughs> Fred, Fred, Kruger. Fred Kruger. I like when they refer to him as Fred Krueger because yeah. he sounds like so much more like a normal dude with that name. Fred, yeah. Fred, Fred Krueger. Kruger, yeah. <laughs> How you doing? He sounds like your neighbor. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And he's like Mr. Rogers or something. Exactly. Fred Kruger. Mr. Kruger. Freddy Krueger, right, is this like iconic thing, screen creation that I don't know. And maybe this is the the issue obviously when you approach a remake mm. right 
and you say, well, we have to fill this role that has been so indelibly etched on, uh, you know, a, a public consciousness. Yep. And this is the thing, I guess, like you go like, <clears throat> okay, we want to remake Frankenstein. Okay. Yeah. You had the Boris Karloff one, but that's like ancient history. You right. Know? I mean, not to, I'm not, I'm not trying to offend anybody who's a fan of the universal monsters. I'm one of them, you know, big fan. We can, but I this. get that after a period of time, you're like, how can we update the thing? Mm -hmm. Right. But A Nightmare on Elm Street is a fucking contemporary movie, you know? That doesn't mean anything to Hollywood, though. They'll, well, they'll reboot shit into the ground. Well, to them, but I mean, to you, when you watch A Nightmare on Elm Street, do you go like, man, that movie's kind of getting crusty and old, and I wish somebody would do something. You could bring, you know, you could really bring something new, fresh, and original to the 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 thing. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I, but I, but I'm not. I, I'm also not a producer on a movie, though. You know what I'm saying? My priorities are different. I think they did that for seven movies on this franchise. Yeah. It's like, what can we do different? And they yeah. fucking did it. Yeah, but that's right. Yeah. How do Super you? Super Freddy's pretty fucking different. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen a lot of interpretations of this character, and one of the most bold interpretations was the 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 new nightmare, Wes yeah. Craven's new nightmare. I like that God, one a right? lot, actually. Yeah. That's a divisive movie. Some people really hate it. I like I it. Know, really? People hate that movie? Yeah. Damn. That's unfortunate. Yeah. The boring lives they must live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, I mean, at least it did something that's at, it's, it's at one time radically different. Yes. But at the same time, it still feels like the core character of Freddy Krueger. Yes. There it was. Okay. <laughs> you uh, got it out? Yeah. <laughs> They did give him weird blue contacts in that movie. I was not a fan of. Yeah, but that's just but a physical, I'm, I'm you know. Yeah. But the character himself, yeah. and maybe it's because this is one of those, uh, you know. I guess I do. You do, uh, you know. You associate when you say the name Bella Lugosi, you see uh, Dracula, right? Or Boris right. Karloff, you see the yeah. Frankenstein monster. I say Robert Englund, right? Mm -hmm. You likely see Freddy Krueger. I actually think of the teacher in Urban Legend. <laughs> <laughs> That's my go-to Robert England point of reference. Oh, <laughs> Professor Wexler? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this no, is an opportunity, I, really I suppose, for someone else to go like, okay, we're going to we're gonna radically, or somehow there's going to be like a, a new and exciting mm -hmm. um, reinterpretation. Because you can do Dracula again, right? He knew Gary Oldman. Everybody goes, oh, I wonder what that would be like. Right. You know? So we go, oh, let's get Jackie Earl Haley. Makes to total play. sense, honestly. I 100% get why they would cast him. This um, is coming right off of Watchmen. Right, right off of Watchmen. Um, when I heard the casting, I'm like, okay. Well, he already played a fucking child molester. Right. Exactly. In Just Little Children, before? which is a goddamn good movie it's a good movie go see, seek it's that fucking one out depressing yeah. but it's yeah. good yeah. yeah but i'm like ooh, typecast jackie earl haley was a child actor yeah. does anybody remember this you ever seen the bad news bears yeah you're, you're aware mm -hmm. of the bad news bears and the yeah. series of films yeah he was one of them i don't remember him yeah small at I, all i know i've seen that movie but i yeah, don't me too but mm. don't retain nope, any of don't it remember yeah. i mean granted i don't either but I became really aware of him when he made this splash mm -hmm. uh, with little children because I yes. can't remember was he, he was a, up for an he Oscar? was a nominated for an Academy Award that year. That's right. Okay, that was his big like comeback. Oh thing. wow! It all happened and then fell apart for him so quickly. It's kind of sad how quickly he well, peaked I mean, and valid. He was what, so <laughs> Robocop, so Watchmen was oh nine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I just looked so it up. It was the year 09. before this. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's Watchmen. what I'm saying. He's on a hot streak right now, man. Yeah, because Watchmen. I mean, like when I think of Jack Earl Haley, to be honest, like that's the Rorschach is the role. I mean, that that's comes his to mind. Yeah, I mean, that's like his most iconic. I would and imagine, his face right? is covered through yeah. most of that movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, like that's a performance and, a, he, and a character. Great. But that's why I think they thought this could work because he, he does gives a great performance in that of this like in a mask of a villain in a mask. Yeah. Basically, wore a yeah. fucking hat. That's what it was. Oh, the hat too. Goddamn that fedora. Did it. Yeah. Like, that did it. Guy in a fedora. Yeah, I know. But we got a guy. Jack Earl Haley, he wears a fedora they, really well. They fucking did him dirty with the makeup job in this movie because he can't move his face at all. No. If you can't fucking, uh, he might as well have a fucking rubber mask on for how much he can move his it's, face. It's like he's paralyzed. Yeah. It's, like his that, mouth is paralyzed. Like, uh, and it just, that's not what scary are you when for? you can't emote at all. No. You know? Well, that's why I think everything was ADR that he did. Everything. Right? But, every single thing. I mean, okay. I'm sure he can't project with all that shit on his face, you know? 
Yeah, because he it does seem like he's just kind of uh, I don't know. He hardly his moves way. his mouth at all. He, yeah. That's one thing he's got in common with Rooney Mara yeah. in this movie. Nobody's yeah. moving their mouths. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's talking to clenched teeth all the time, and I I cannot with that this fucking mumblecore bullshit get it out of my horror movies. It's a very angsty movie. Put it, if you want to put in your indie movie, your indie dramas, that's fine. But when dialogue is important to the story, you need to fucking speak up, man. Yeah, but this is a style of acting. Well, I mean, we're going beyond Jackie Earl Haley mm-hmm. here, but uh, you know, the the everybody here. I mean, angst is a good word to describe it. But they're always on the edge of breaking down in tears at any moment from the start of the movie. Yeah, yeah from the it's very, very dour, get-go, very dour right off the bat. Mm-hmm. They speak in this kind of where you imagine that the actors are going out and like you know, uh, doing that running in place thing to get kind of, yep. <laughs> you know, so when they're talking, it's like, you know, there's, a, there's this, uh, their, their voice is trembling mm. every fucking line delivery in this goddamn movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, everybody's yeah. brooding all the time. Yeah. Just sitting around. They're all so tired. Being mopey and brooding. And that's like, that's not everybody's MO. It's making me fall asleep. Cause they haven't had sleep in a while. Yeah. At no point. You remember that movie insomnia? With yes, the, yeah. I, I really Either like that one. movie, that Christopher, the Christopher Nolan one. Yeah. yeah, that's the one I really like. Yeah, I that's like a, felt that guy was tired. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I remember watching that and kind of like the the way that that time and daylight works in that movie, kind of fucking me up just from watching it, being like, wait. That's Pacino, Hold on. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he just looks tired to begin with. Yeah, but, yeah, but in yeah. that movie, just, uh, that movie's that is the great one yeah. of the great tired performances. Mm-hmm. He yeah. out does. I think Sk- Stellan Skarsgård did that in the original uh, mm-hmm. film, but. Uh, not once did I actually feel in this movie that anyone here was uh, sleepy. No, at I could all. S- I could see the the the, the uh, eye makeup the bags. Was bad. The eye makeup's horrible. It looks so like, like it looks obviously like makeup. A black mark or black crayon and yeah. drew under her eyes. Or like horrible. um the one guy later on when he's like really tired and his eyelids are purple, it literally looks like just like purple crayon just mm-hmm. smeared across like the top of his eye. I was like, oh my god, that's yeah. so distracting. How bad the makeup job is. And worse than that, the goddamn fucking CGI sequences in this film oh are unforgivably bad. How? We actually should have watched through the credits to find out who did them. <laughs> it was worse what than I remember it being. How and I remember you, it being pretty bad. How do you watch the scene from the original of him uh, above Nancy's bed coming through the wall? How do you see what they did there, make what they made in this movie, and go, that's fine. It'll be fine. If you're Brad Fuller... And Andrew form, you go like teenagers are dumb and they'll come enough. see it anyways. Yeah, because it doesn't even matter what's the content of the movie. So this is the thing that uh, yeah. I heard because I was just watching a documentary about a uh, guy I'd never heard of, Al Adamson, who was this producer of these exploitation movies uh, in his entire career. Movies like Dracula versus Frankenstein and like this kind of stuff. Uh, and he said. That basically theater owners at that period of time, and this I don't think has changed, aren't buying the movie. Who cares what's in the movie? They're buying the poster. In mm-hmm. this case, we're buying the name, value, recognition. Yep. It really doesn't matter right. what's in your movie at all. That's why you hire a fucking music video director. And that way you're like, well, it's going to look good. He'll mm-hmm. be cheap. Yep. Yeah, he hasn't directed anything, so he's got no. Right. He's not no going to push back on anything. Right. Yeah. We can do whatever this we want because he be won't push back. Yep. We mm-hmm. will no pick pushback. the crew that will work with him. Yep. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Maybe he can bring a cinematographer from mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. but whatever. We're picking everybody else who Let works him have on one the set to make him feel like he has some control. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he makes some good-looking music videos. So he yep. can bring a cinematographer. Yeah. So you know the movie will at least look like a professional thing. Yeah. Yep. Well, <sighs> that's kind of where it stops. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't know how to direct actors because he never has before. No, uh, it seems very George Lucasian yeah. in its approach. Nobody's of, singing in this movie, so he's having a real hard time with it. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of would expect it. Would have expected for being something directed by a music video guy that the soundtrack would have been more wall to wall packed. Something. The the score is terrible, and there's what two songs. This is Steve Jablonski. We're blaming for this, but okay, he was good. the Platinum Dunes guy name. who did. Yeah. Uh, uh, he well, actually, I didn't mind his score for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, although they're very dour. Mm-hmm. You know, this was yeah. when we were going. I guess because this is what what horror was going through in the two thousand early two thousands, right? Which actually feels to me we're not like here to have fun. It was started. This isn't true, but it feels like it was started by like the Rob Zombie aesthetic of like 
Because Rob Zombie is one of the first guys to go like, you know what? I want to take horror back to the scary stuff that it was in the in the 70s. Mm. Probably because we went through the 90s when horror just kind of sucked in general. Yeah, I think you're onto something. I think it was Rob Zombie and people like Rob Zombie, but also they had just seen Seven and Fight Club and they took the wrong things from that. You know, they were like, I want that gritty, really mean yeah. aesthetic and yeah. just made a mean movie around yeah. it. Yeah. You know, well, they're all, making a smart all movie of these around movies it? are like mean. They're mm-hmm. mean. mean with like Unlike- awful mean and unlikable people. Yeah. yeah. Unlikable characters. Yes. But if they even have enough dimension to be unlikable. Right. Like mo- no one in this movie had a discernible personality. No, we we at didn't all. get a, a, a point to get on this to where we start caring about these characters. Yeah. We start at the beginning. Honestly, like, I struggled with names for a while, even. Yeah. Uh, ooh, I <laughs> yeah. know Nancy, and the only reason I know that is because it's, it's the same. It's the same name. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I can't remember. Is there a Billy? I don't remember what Chris their names was the girl, are. right? Chris was the girl. Yeah. That's is that the same? No, no it's Tina, it's right? Tina. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Okay, so Christina. So- <laughs> Yeah, this movie cast. That's probably uh, what it is. God damn it, it's probably the same name. They just call her Chris instead of Tina. God damn it! I hate this movie even more now. Ugh. Why would I, I wasted time thinking about that? Oh my god. That's oh, a good jump, though. Great. I like that. Yeah, yeah it didn't occur to me. You're probably right. So, I mean, basically, we're going to go with the bones of the original film in some way, right? This yeah. movie is written by two guys who have done good stuff. This is what it, it blows my mind, <laughs> right? When you see something so catastrophically bad, Wesley Strick wrote Cape Fear, mm-hmm. right? He was a script doctor on a bunch of stuff. He also gave us uh, Wolf. I think it was Wesley Strick. Arachnophobia was Wesley Strick. So, um, so good, like horror fun. stuff, even. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other guy, his name is now escaping me. It's like Eric, uh, Hess, Hess, Hessier, Hessier. Like that, yeah. but he, uh, co-wrote, I think like Conjuring 2. He wrote Arrival, Eric, right? Yeah. Hessier? Hessier, yeah. Hessier. Arrival or The Arrival? Which one? Arrival, the, uh, Amy, the Amy Adams, Adams one? one. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Right, which I think was up for maybe an Oscar for wrote, best screenplay. It was. He wrote Bird Box as well. That's, oh shit. Bye, and fucking. Lights Out. Right. Ooh, Bloodshot. Oh, that, that new one? Yeah. Going. Oh, no. I just saw a trailer for that the other day and was like, what yeah. the fuck? Oh. He wrote the thing. Oh. The remake? That motherfucker. Oh, shit. Is he almost on the wall now? <laughs> oh, shit. Final Destination 5, it looks oh, like. Oh, fuck. I might put him on the wall. Whoops. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say every single one of those movies, even the thing, which I couldn't stand, uh, is better, better than, than this. this? Yeah. yeah. But the thing does share some it's the like, same problems. They don't. Yeah. He, they don't seem to understand like how to fucking tell a story. And I don't know if it's like these also guys, a music video director. What Harry did Hesian? the thing? Who no? Who directed the thing? I'm just trying to. I don't remember uh, who directed it. It. Can't re- it was a. It was like a Norwegian yeah. guy who I don't can't remember if he had done a bunch of. Uh, I think he did a music video and hadn't done a movie before that. But it seems like they but, yeah. don't understand some cardinal rules about screenwriting, how to put a film together, what character motivations are, how to establish yeah. characters. This movie goes on for about 20 minutes and we were still going like they haven't installed what I like to call the dramatic engine, <laughs> you know, the thing yeah. that the characters are working toward and what we're trying to, you know, the first movie when you go back to it is like a model of simplicity. Like a lot of these eighties films are where right. like the, the, the the characters feel somewhat real and relatable, you know. And I mean, I'm saying on a script level, even before you bring the personality of the performer in there, mm. and then each scene kind of locks into it's like a jigsaw puzzle. It connects to the next scene, and you know, it's like, well, we have to go here now that you've introduced this. It's like, well, we have to find out how that works. Right. It takes you to the next scene. It's all like this kind of like logical step by step. This movie is just wandering. It's wandering. Around. Yeah, it's disjointed. But so was the thing. So is yeah. it feels like you know a we're lot of on, modern horror films. We're just on to the next scene. Can we talk about the cold open for yeah. a little bit? Because you you guys didn't seem like you remembered that scene as soon as it came up with the diner. I, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, well, because oh, you were yeah. asking about the title card, and I was like, well, yeah, it's after the cold yeah. open, like Friday the Thirteenth, which yeah. I think has a title card like ten minutes into the goddamn it does. movie. Yeah. We get a short film before that one gets the yeah. title yeah. card. I, I actually like the cold open of this movie. I think it's I think it's, this seems like the only time anyone's ever trying 
is in the cold open. Whether it be directors, actors, anybody. This is the only time it feels like an effort was put in, I think. Like trying in what way? What are you talking about? Uh, Acting. um, I feel like they tried, like, I like the idea of someone appearing to kill themselves in front of someone else in this kind of universe. Mm. Um, This is the only time they try to establish relationships between any of the characters. And, like, she witnesses him kill himself, quote unquote. And, like, I was like, that's an interesting thing. Follow that now. And then they just completely abandon it. This is Kellen Lutz, the star of Twilight, yep. who's uh, in a diner. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. All these people are supposed to be. That's the other thing. I'm like, high schoolers. They, yeah. They're supposed to be high schoolers, but, like, this guy looks like he's, like, 27 years old. Yeah. They At all least. Do. Yeah. They all do. Yeah. I mean, they're all so pretty. I don't remember. So pretty. They are. They wear their designer form-fitted clothing very well. Mm-hmm. Perfectly styled hair. God, I wish I looked like that in high school. I know. Holy they're right? all model types. That'd have been right. great. Um, but uh, I'm totally um, seeing what's her Kellen Kate Lutz. Cassidy or Kate something Cassidy. in my mind. I, I lost my train of thought. Mm-hmm. She's from, uh, she was like it, briefly in like a bunch of horror remakes. The ones you don't remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, when a Stranger Calls. The remake, Black Yikes. Christmas. Oh yeah, the remake, the two thousand six. Yes, remake. Uh, Black yes. Xmas. You have to specify yeah. now. Colin. Oh, actually, There's three of those goddamn that's movies. That's right. I'm sorry. Yeah, there is. See, this is what. Yeah. God, see, fuck, you're <laughs> just making me even more upset. Uh, she is now, I believe, Black Canary on the Arrowverse. Oh, yeah. Okay. And she was on Supernatural for a while. So Good for her. Supernatural people yep. probably know all about her. Anyway, uh, she uh, uh, witnesses. This guy apparently kill himself in a because he's having a waking dream that mm-hmm. takes place in a diner mm. uh, with very moody lighting uh, because a music video director has made blue, red, teal, and orange. Yeah, and we get to see. I think before the credit title scene even happens, well, uh, Freddy Krueger pretty much like you know, oh, that's okay. There he is. Yeah, Jackie Earl. I Haley. forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Like they're just he's there. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. No suspense. Nothing. Bam, there. Nothing. Yeah. No build up to it. I mean, we all know it's a Freddy movie, but. Is that what they're going on? Is it the idea that like, well, you have seen all of these movies up until this point in your life. So it feels like it. Yeah. But then, cause... Like then the movie doesn't exist as its own. Yeah. Thing. You that's can't the, that's a this. huge problem with this movie. It does not exist on its own. It is not its own thing. Are we sure this wasn't made in order to keep rights somewhere? Like I'm it sure wasn't it was. like an I expiration mean, I, date I, was I'm coming up. Yes, sure I wasn't. feel like that had to be the driving force, well, right? Freddy it doesn't matter what it is, just make something. Jason was the last one in the that series. That was 2003. Right? Okay. So that's, yeah, I'm sure. Seven you know, year mark, yeah. We heard recently, I think, that uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, the rights have reverted back to the West Craven mm-hmm. Estate. So now mm-hmm. they're up for auction again, and somebody you can fucking buy them. And yeah, you can do whatever the hell you want with them. Or you can just let Freddy live on home video <laughs> and streaming services and have him come around every mm-hmm. fucking Halloween. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. Anyway. Honestly, <laughs> if they wanted to do it into like, if they wanted to make like a HBO TV show that was like six episodes long. I'd be down for that. I think a TV show would be cool. But well, why? Well, who's going to do it better than Robert England? Well, I, you can bring Robert England back. I'm sure he would be down to do it. What happens when he dies? Then see, just get CG. someone else. He's just, a CG yeah, Robert he's Robert off I Tarkin and then, yeah. The problem with that, I mean, they were successful with the other, the other reboots of these horror franchises aren't looked down um, upon as much as this one is, is because it's easy to put a dude behind a mask who doesn't talk. Like, Ryan, Robert, ha- like Halloween. And- Robert England put on all this shit just last year to do an, one episode of the Goldbergs. You don't think he would do another movie or a TV show given the chance? This is what How he lives it? for. <laughs> Somebody, I don't know. But again, what yeah, happens? I mean, when it dies? would be cool to actually have him come back and just, I mean, if he's going to be and just see, but I always think that we, we somewhere only the, the child's play in the phantasm series actually got it right. They're just going to keep on making them. And like it play. never, what did I say? Child's Play and Phantasm? You did say Child's Play. Oh, yeah. did you? Oh, Child's yeah. Play and Phantasm. Yeah. They're like, those series never ended. We're just going to nope, keep yep. on keep going. going. No, it's going to get fucking weird, but yeah. we're going to keep going. All the other ones have broken continuity so they can restart, reboot, you know, mm-hmm. do something else. But yeah. it would Branching be cool timelines. if we just had Freddy Krueger movies as Robert Eglin just kept getting older or something like that. Yeah. I would have been fine with that. That's fine. Well, that was there fine. a reason they didn't bring him back for this one? Like, why did they recast it? I think because it's a, this is a new, you know, like, oh, we're doing it all new. 
this is the see this is this is the slick Hollywood version because the other ones, all the New Line Cinema ones. I mean, New Line Cinema was never at least until Warner Brothers bought them yeah. and did the whole Lord of the Rings thing and all that. New Line Cinema was still like I think you know this relatively small company, right? Who was just kind of making these uh, crazy little movies with you know shoe polish and you know spit yeah you know <laughs> made these nightmare on elm street movies so they were always kind of not quite independent but like what do you call them? the the mini majors yes yeah. yeah uh this is the slick glossy super budget you know hollywood version of right it. this starts a new franchise that's this what they're starts trying a new to do. series that's although where for. is we only got the texas chainsaw massacre the beginning out of this Platinum Dunes arrangement. We never got Amityville 2, Friday the 13th Part 2, mm. and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2. We didn't a Friday the 2nd, Friday the 13th happen? Didn't that movie make a fuck time? We that movie it. made a lot of money the yeah. first week it came out, and then it had one of the steepest drop-offs, I think, Ooh. of any movie ever. Bad word of mouth and probably bad week. reviews. Yeah. Likes. Mm. Although it has, I think, in hindsight, you know, when people watch it now, it's you know, when it's on TV, uh they think it's okay. I gotta like, say, Texas compared Chainsaw to this, Massacre. I was gonna say, uh, if you watch it on TV, a title card pops up and says, "Hey, at least it's not a Nightmare on Elm Street." Right? <laughs> yeah, could be worse. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, this movie kind of shines a brighter light on some of the other planet Doesn't doing stuff. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm like, I think this is the worst one. I think yeah. this is the worst oh, remake without that they did. by far. Question. Yeah, yeah, but why is that? Why is it so bad? You have it has no personality. There. There's major no, I don't think flaws. it has the ingredients. All right. So for personality, then we got to go one back ingredient. to... We, well, we got to go back to Jackie Earl Haley. Yes. Okay, so his casting in the movie, Oscar nominee, coming off of Watchmen, on a hot streak, he's going to be Freddy Krueger. What do we think of his performance, and what did he bring to the role that was his? I think that... I think his performance was encumbered by a few factors. I think I agree with that. Um, I think he was, like I said before, when I heard that he was cast, I was just like, that's actually good cast. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think he got, I don't know. I think he got a raw deal somewhere. Someone fucked up with many bad decisions were made. Um, one, the makeup. Okay. Yeah. What's wrong with the makeup? Um, it's. Too much. It's too realistic to what actual burns look like, I think. Which is what they were trying to do on purpose. Yeah. Where um, it's not the cheese pizza face that okay. the original Freddy So there's has. a little bit of fantasy to the original Freddy Krueger. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, in the original Kevin Ye Yeager makeup from the first one was never really front lit, mm -hmm. but it's yeah. not like, you know, I mean, it is not as sophisticated as the one here yeah. because the one here uses CG to take away part of his face. And, yeah. You know, so you can in see inside of his mm -hmm. cheek and all this other stuff. Um, but it is, you know, much more horribly scarred than he gets the pizza face by like part three, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, that's what we're going with for the rest of these. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, his eyes in this uh, one in this, one. I hate the eyes. Yeah, He looks like a deformed cat. Their the eyes are not good. squinted. They're, right. He's, he can't do anything with them. They're too squinted. He can't move them. And like the opening or, or like it looks like they have blackout contacts on him. It just looks like it's all black instead of having like a pupil and yeah. iris, you know? He's got one that I think is supposed to be like, you know, it's cataract. Gotcha. And okay. the other one is. But that's a, that is, this hinders his emoting, you know? Yeah. He can't move his face. You can't see his fucking eyes. They covered up anything that would give him a chance to, you know, be a character. Yeah. yeah. And then they and then. ADR'd his voice the entire time or dubbed his voice and mm -hmm. altered it in post mm -hmm. for every single line well, he has in his this movie. Post, okay, so his voice, um, his delivery then. So his take on the character is he's going to be Sling, the he's scarier be, Freddy Krueger. He sounds like Billy Bob Thornton from Sling Blade. I like the laugh, though. The well, like chuckle. He, he it works for well, me. But he's copying the, the Robert England one. Yeah, but right? I mean, like, I, I can see why he went with Sling Blade because... I'm sure in the back of my mind, he's thinking you can't just do Rorschach again because everyone's going to be like, oh, yeah. this is his one thing. Yeah, yeah. You can't just do Rorschach. vocal performance. Yeah. And he's really gravelly and yeah. yelling a lot in that. And he's like, I, 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 I'm going to be that guy if I do this again. And so he just kind of went flat with it, yeah. unfortunately. Okay, so flat. That's what we're saying is performance. There's not a lot of... The delivery of everything's kind of the same. Yeah. But he, they're trying to take away... I mean, obviously, the idea is that Freddy Krueger in the original film was a frightening, menacing character. 
Part of that is because he's not really in the original film a whole lot. In the original film, it's like, and Robert Englund as Freddy Krueger, the boogeyman who shows up in a couple scenes, yeah. mm-hmm. right? By the time you get to the end of that franchise, he's a wisecracking guy. He's it. almost a comedian. Putting on Nintendo Power Gloves. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the most be- egregious. <laughs> you know? Yeah, when he becomes fully MTV Freddy. Like, yeah. Like, what was it? The moment he started appearing on talk shows on TV, I was like, it's, that's, yeah. we're, that was, guys, we're done here. That was like right around, I think it was Elm Street 4. Yep. It was about when you were at peak Freddy. Elm Street 4 was the first one that was like Robert Englund in a Nightmare on Elm Street 4. <laughs> this one is, is Jackie Earl Haley is right up front. It's like he's the star of the movie. So he's in like every fucking scene. Yep. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, there is no attempt to hide what he looks like or reveal anything no. or like he is like right up front showing up all the time, popping out a fucking boo. And then, you know, all in the, the worst, like no suspense, no scares. But they think this is, you know, it's a loud noise movie. Yep. Also, I don't know. I don't know how tall Jack Earl Haley is. They're short man. They shoot short. him in a way that looks him makes him look so diminutive and yes. short in this movie that yeah. that really does not help him yes. feel like a scary and all figure. that makeup packed on his face and everything makes his head look big. Yeah, compared to yeah. his body. Yeah, and he never has any kind of like the um, kind of the elastic reality. Yeah, of the the Nightmare on Elm Street series became known for. Yeah, you know, like there's no really inventive, creative kills. They basically run through a checklist of stuff that worked in the. You know, we're going to recreate scenes from the original movie, but okay, but any remake, like the agreement, I, I, think, I know like, this, Colin, is right. yeah. this is my Colin's argument. Getting wound Colin's up, thing. guys, buckle up. It's, it's Colin's the, thing. The agreement that we sign as an audience with the makers of a remake is that basically, like on the dotted line, like if you're going to do something a second time, mm-hmm. you are going to bring something to it that improves it. Right? Yes. You've got an angle you do here. Better. Or it's going to go somewhere that's better than the original movie. This movie recreates Freddy coming out of the wall. An effect that was so goddamn cheap in the original movie that basically they just use a big piece of stretchy cloth and he like comes up and it's fucking terrifying. Yeah. In this movie, they use CGI and it's like this big snake bubbling through the wall and it's like some of the worst shit you've ever seen. Some of the worst shit you've ever seen. They looks re- like 90s animation. It's bad. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's that scene in The Frighteners or something. I mean, yeah. it's pretty, I think pretty that awful. looks better than this. You're, you're, everything you're, everything right. in The Frighteners is better yes. than this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they recreate the uh, Nancy in the bathtub scene, mm-hmm. yeah. which has no payoff at all. But you do see the knives coming up out of the the the, the bubble, the mm-hmm. soap bubble water. What am the, I trying to say? The bubbles, suds, the suds. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, knuckle they, first. They don't. Eat, yeah, knuckle first. Not yeah, they don't even. First. They don't even do it right. Yeah, like they you said, their a reaction isn't timed right, and it's like, what the fuck? Like she's like, what, mom? You know, when somebody knocks on the door, and like, if you look, you'd still see the thing. Right. And the other one, yeah. Uh, then they recreate uh, what would have been Tina's death of her getting, uh, you know, dragged up the wall. Yeah. But she just original. flops around. Because there's no so dragging. Much more exciting. I mean, now we. It's got, like a bad possession it's, scene. It's goofy. Yeah. It's fucking goofy. Awful. It's yeah. Goofy. But the dragging is so much cooler. Like the actual physical room rotating and dragging yeah. someone up the wall is so much cooler than yeah, this. It's like it's painful and and just kind of it's nightmarish. Mm-hmm. You know, in that first movie. To see her getting mm-hmm. like dragged up this wall and Rod's unable to do anything about it. You know, uh, in this one. They try to recreate that, but I, I don't know. It was just like, this is completely underwhelming. She gets slammed from room, side of yeah. the room to the side of the room, breaks a couple mirrors. The sound mixing is not good as well as her feet. And it's did, 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 it's did, did, over like right away. Where in the original one, that scene goes on for a while, it feels like. Yeah. Well, this, this one, one felt like, like it went on forever, but for different reasons. I don't know. I just, feel like she kind of got like ragdolled around a little bit and then it was done. And then there was like, like oh. a and yeah. like instead of just three or four uh, razors to the chest, it's like this gigantic. Yeah. Uh, so know. much blood. Yeah. Why yeah. is this movie so afraid of absurdity? Like it's a movie For- about fucking dreams and it is afraid to do anything slightly weird. Even yeah. we don't even get like Colin, as you point out, we don't even get his arm stretching. Mm-hmm. That doesn't, they won't even try that. Like, that's you know, what I'm saying. That it, elastic it, reality. The right. only time they really do it that I remember now having watched it is when, uh, she's running down the hall and she runs into the, the floor becomes like a giant pool of blood. That was cool. It was that very was actually dead. not too bad. 
but it, and it's a better version of something we saw in like Nightmare on Elm Street three, mm-hmm. you know, or something. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, okay, there's that one thing that actually could have been in like an, a real Nightmare on Elm Street mm-hmm. movie or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah, they're just a. That's really all I can think of, right? That where they did some kind of like. Oh, she goes to a door at some point and it doesn't have a handle. Oh, well, and like the bookshelves looked kind of off perspective for that one guy when he was in the library. Like the, the bookshelves are a little like trickery. Warped. Is, yeah, oh, and that's yeah, like yeah. it. Ooh. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. You, you look tired. This movie does the same kind of assuming that uh, that uh, I guess you haven't seen the first one. The first one actually does set Tina up as being the protagonist for a little while. Mm-hmm. You think she's the point of view character because you start with her, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, in this one, it tries to do the same kind of thing. Um, for Ember. With uh, Kate Cassidy, if yeah. I'm saying her name right. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it goes on for a while. goes on for a while. And I don't get what we're, like, our... Uh, again, <laughs> That's because somebody saw an earlier cut and we just went, damn, Rooney Mara's boring as fuck. Yeah. Let's stay with uh, I Cassidy I can't understand a, a goddamn word yeah. she's saying. Cut her back and... <laughs> Well, okay, so what's going on there? Rooney Mara is an Academy Award nominated, nominated actress, twice nominated, twice nominated, who got her big break apparently by appearing in the Social Network because mm-hmm. then David Fincher cast her in The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, which a lot of you didn't see, but you probably should because it's a pretty you should definitely good watch it. Movie. Yeah, it's good. Um, and then she went on to do things with Steven Soderbergh, and you know, eventually yep. was nominated for uh, for Carol. Uh, so the world believes that she's a talented actress. Yeah. I doubt everything now. <laughs> wow, like this is <laughs> bad. Mm. We're saying she's a very internalized. Uh, I, hey, I've seen her in a few other things. She's good in those things. Well, okay. yeah, I mean, I've seen her in good things too. But I'm just saying now, I'm like retroactively right. second guessing all yeah. of that. You it's know, like she mm. is horrible mm-hmm. in this movie. And by basically, but then again, we can't tell if this is the actress or if it's the. I mean, because we know where she went from here yeah. on mm-hmm. but that could have been because of like bad reviews that she got out of this movie Maybe. that she's like i gotta i gotta work i gotta do shit. better mm-hmm. you know <laughs> she did say that she hated making this movie and she almost quit acting because of it well there you go so it inspired like, her but david did this Fincher, movie ask that it. much of her what's there to hate about making this I don't movie know. It didn't ask a lot of her she didn't do shit in well, this movie. maybe she felt like what we felt watching this just like it's dour i'm just I'm just a fucking sourpuss you know, the entire time. She didn't have to be like in a swimsuit wet outside in the mud like that other poor actor. So she didn't have it nearly as rough That's as true. some other people in yeah, this I movie. Yeah, I had it rough. Like, yeah, I the got, poor actor, my it God. It just occurred to me, Rooney Mara. I got trivia, obscure fucking trivia about Rooney Mara. Okay. Did you know that she is, her real name is Patricia Rooney Mara. Rooney. Rooney is her last name. Is one of her two last yeah. names. Do you know the Rooneys? Yeah, they own football teams and the shit. The Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. Do you know the Omaras, which is I think on her mother's side? Do they own another football team? Yes, they do. Cowboys. No. So that's... she's rich, is what you're saying? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That family is rich. Yeah, they, two football. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> the Rooneys well, and the Omaras. No, I don't feel bad for saying she's Rooney bad in this Mara. movie. She'll, yeah, she'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. Oh no, she's always got. Plus, she got that that Joaquin Phoenix money to fall yeah. back on at this right. point. Right. Yeah, because she's like auctioning off uh, like football memorabilia and stuff like that. For I mean, she has a Weird. bunch of costumes really? and whatever that she does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So anyway, Rooney Mara is the is Nancy. The role essayed more believably, I would say, by Heather Langenkamp. Now, Heather yeah. Langenkamp, I think, has gotten some criticism over the years as not being a, ter- a terribly uh, um, an actor with a lot of range. Sure. But goddamn her fucking Nancy Thompson <laughs> is like a believable, uh, you know, like relatable I mean, she feels real, like yeah. girl next door. Mm-hmm. I guess uh, maybe that's too broad to say, you know. But I mean, like she inhabits that fucking character. Like I believed every goddamn moment of that movie that she was on screen. Didn't believe anything that Rooney Mara did in this. Movie. No, because you couldn't understand a fucking word she was saying, and she didn't emote anything, so you couldn't read it on her face, and you couldn't hear it. So. Yeah, but I, I wonder. You know, it's like actors on a movie set are kind of. I mean, they really are at the discretion of the director. They don't know how big or how small right. to play a part. We don't know which take we're looking at. Right. You know, like he didn't have, I think, a cohesive idea, Samuel Bayer, right, of mm-hmm. like how the flow of a performance was supposed to go or what was going to, he's just like showing up and like, what are we doing on this scene today? We're doing this. 
Yep. And it, like he didn't know because he works in small pieces yes. in a music video. He doesn't see how uh, on a film you have to sustain a performance through right. peaks and valleys right. over a running time of like, you know, an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. I see yeah. that. Yeah, okay. That does. That tracks. We should touch on Freddy Krueger's backstory and then how it ends cuz Yeah. That's a big oh, thing. Oh, fuck. In this movie. We're almost there. Yeah, already. that's why okay. I'm like, uh, <laughs> okay, clock, like We got time. Um, Don't look at that fucking clock. Mm. So, he's a child molester, not necessarily a child killer. Don't okay. say he killed anyone. But Colin, you pointed out and I was laughing. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to stop laughing about it, but when they cut to the flashbacks of him as the preschool at the preschool being the like the landscaper, he literally is in the groundskeeper Willie outfit from uh, a yeah. nightmare on uh, Evergreen uh, Terrace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Short. Simpsons, it's yeah. The, it is that exact outfit. And he even has the little like hand rake that he sprays yeah, no, with. Right. I was like, oh yeah. my God. <laughs> when you said that, I was like, oh, I, this is, yeah. if, if this movie, if I didn't hate this movie, now it's ruined, you know? And is that a case of like the director being above the material? Like he doesn't really get this stuff. He's like, okay, mm. I'll do it because I'm hired and it's a payday and it's Nightmare on Elm Street. So right. residuals. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. But I know The Simpsons. That was funny. So we're going to yeah. make him Groundskeeper Willie. Isn't that what the character is based yikes. on? Yikes. Anyway? <laughs> Lives in a basement. Yeah. Lives in the basement <laughs> of a preschool. Parents, would you oh send your God. kid to a preschool where the landscaper lived in the I basement? That red flag can't get any bigger. Yeah. Lives in the basement of a preschool. Because that means he can't provide housing for himself. And then it's like, well, why can't he do that? Probably because there's something wrong with him. But in the basement, we're talking about like, you know, the dusty, moldy, cobwebby kind of, you know. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, it's basically lives in a pedophile a basement yep. is what you're going for. A bunker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The pedophile bunker. Yeah. Uh, I didn't uh, understand or get the whole idea that this movie hinges around that basically all of these kids, um, these 20 somethings who go to high school. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've never seen, yeah, we do see them in high school. Um, that they're all connected by a past that they don't remember, which is that they were all molested by I mean, Fred Krueger at a preschool when they were in kindergarten. Mm-hmm. But they don't remember at a preschool even, when they were in preschool, which means but, they're like three or four years but old. They don't re- have any memory of going there. It's like they were born. And when the movie started, yeah. right. We're filling in the backstory. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, it really, it's like dark city or something. It's like, it doesn't exist until somebody says it. Right. Um, but yeah, so they all, so there is, so what does Freddie want? He's a child molester. Does he just, but why is oh, he? Oh, you mean why is he coming back now? Yeah. For revenge, <laughs> I guess. I mean, so that's my on best. Who? On the parents who killed him by killing their kids. That- are you getting that from this movie or from the other ones? I mean, I don't, I think it's probably the same in both. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it is a remake. See, this one, it, it, it felt less like that to me. I don't know if this is what. I mean, nothing. At. I'm not saying it was clear. Nothing was clear in this movie about the plot. In this one, giant what, it, holes. what it seems like, and correct me if I'm wrong. It seems like the kids have somehow forgot on their own. They've repressed these memories. And yes. the parents have done everything to make them forget about it because they took justice into their own hand hands and burn this guy down. Now, in the original, it was because uh, the he got off on a court technique. He was arrested, prosecuted, got off at the trial, so the parents were like vigilantes and went and burned him down. Mm. And this one, uh, because he's actually molested the kids, the parents are just like, I always want to know what happens before they get in the cars and chase him down. Right. he's running through the streets going like, I didn't do it. Uh <laughs> Wait this this before this it led to one of my favorite things and like and then we started to notice things mm-hmm. <laughs> like the giant razor the giant razor marks Mark. on your child's back yeah oh my god anyway, uh, but there the idea is that um, I mean I guess if we're talking like long term what's going on his goal yeah. right Rooney Mara's character Nancy was his quote unquote favorite yeah. right this is the little girl that he liked to molest the most mm-hmm. yeah okay i'm letting that sink in right like this is where we're going in this fucking movie and uh so but she has forgotten all about him mm-hmm. and so basically by killing these other kids which i guess is like you know 
I suppose in some ways, like you said, I suppose, is it revenge against the parents? I don't know. We never get the, the grief. The parents really don't figure in on this too much. Yeah. It's just, the, it's like, oh my God, somebody killed Tom. We got to you do something about, you know, like who's killing Tom? Oh, it turns out we knew Tom. How did we all know Chris, Tom? And like, well, what? They don't even react when their friends, quote no. unquote, die. It's no. Like, call, call the one dude up on the phone. Chris is dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He does. Like, yeah. he's, he's dead. Yeah. yeah, and that's like the only time a cell phone is ever used in this movie. Which, like, there are other opportunities where it should be, and it it's like they tried to avoid it because yeah. they're like, "Oh, that'll date it." And it's like, yeah, that's going to be the thing that dates this movie, yeah. not the shitty effects, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, and the editing techniques and the rhythms. I mean, it's all yeah. in the it's all the pretty slick. dated. But basically, Freddie figures if he can uh, kill enough people, uh, right, that eventually. The mystery, trying to solve the mystery of who's killing all these people will rekindle the uh, memory in Nancy, leading her back to the rape room in the basement of the fucking school where she will pass out because he kept her. He says to her, I kept you awake so long that basically Uh. you're going to fall asleep and you're going to be mine for a long time. You know, you're not going to be able to wake up. He doesn't actually want to kill her. He just wants her again. Yeah, this movie is fucking sick and disgusting. It's gross. Away, it's but, like, gross. Okay, it's like, not that that's a good choice, <laughs> but at least it's trying something. Yeah, but it doesn't. It doesn't. But it it doesn't. It doesn't pay off on how just disturbing that for is. sure. But because then he just like now we have time to play and starts throwing her around the room. But I'm like, I don't think that's actually. There's no sexual menace. The way that Robert Englund um, was able to do it. When she's tied it. to the bed in that dress and he's like running his yeah, hand up her thigh, that's he's pretty doing uncomfortable. It in a way that like like uh, the the <laughs> Maybe Robert Englund, very uncomfortable. Yeah. the Robert England version is more of like a uh, it's like a Freudian sexual uh, menace where well they he's not they don't outright say he's a molester in that yeah. movie they say he's a child killer. Yeah. In that movie that's that that's better, why is that a good okay so is it a good. Uh, uh, attack on this movie to like say if we're going to remake it we're actually going to make him what was implied in the first movies i I think like i i know a lot of people are bothered by it and yeah it makes me uncomfortable too and i don't particularly like it but i think it's scarier and as someone who doesn't like the mtv friday i appreciate them taking it in a scarier direction there's that i think the problem with it or the problem that i have is that it's at a certain point you go to these movies, you want to have fun somewhere in there a little bit. Yeah, you want to be scary and all that stuff, but there's just, I think, certain subjects that just don't make what you're watching enjoyable anymore. This is And this element made this movie, aside from everything else, like really unenjoyable to mm. watch. It's kind of weird to say that child murder's enjoyable, but molestation isn't. It is weird. I mean, it's weird. You know, like, about it is. It. Yeah. But the idea that the, the producers on the first one were like, we're not going to say molester. Yeah. We're That's just going to say far. he was a dirty child killer. It's all there, kind of. He used to take kids back to his boiler room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he killed them. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, there's an implication, I suppose, that your mind can fill in. Yeah. This movie, the makers are like, we don't want to deal in any kind of abstract ideas. We, no, want, to, we want text. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is put her in the goddamn dress. Yeah. 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 We want to get that message across. Yeah. But it's 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 for unsavory. Me, it's it's maybe very is the yeah. yeah. But it is right. It, you're walking this really fine line that I mean, there are plush dolls of Freddy Krueger, mm-hmm. uh, quote unquote, child killer, not molester. Yeah. yeah. Although and that's are, okay. As long as he kills him, it's fine. <laughs> as long as he kills him after he molests him, we're okay with that. Well, but- I think the idea is that he's the guy who's going to get you in your dreams. He's, you know, like you're afraid of death. He's this claw-handed thing. And somehow it is kind of weird how either we as a, a, a film-going public kind of suppress the notion or just block out the, the you know, the more unsavory thing until this movie is like, no, no, You're, we're going to confront that. Yeah. We're going to go with the idea that he was right actually raping kids I think- and taking pictures of them in his basement. It's the same idea that um, yeah, you don't care if people get killed in movies, but if they kill an animal, you get fucking upset. Don't want them to kill the dog. Humans fine, as long as the dog survives. Yeah, I so think it's that not. same idea to me. I can see that, but I think 
this is like something people really get really upset about with this movie. Like this is the thing people are probably the most upset about with is. Well, and I, you know what it is? This might be a hot take. You don't like it because it villainizes Freddy Krueger and you like to do it for him. <laughs> That's why you don't like it. Because you can't like him. Yeah, he's a child that molester. Is interesting as fuck. That's that, what it is. Yeah, it makes Freddy Krueger maybe makes maybe a, it makes him an actual bad guy. Yeah, it yeah. makes him an actual bad guy. Yeah. You like, can't root for a child molester. Nope. Apparently, a killer you can. But, but see, it's the thing I never really rooted. You know, I'm going back to the, the first. Yes, Nightmare if we just Elm stick Street with the first movie, one, if, yes. if you look at that one, you don't really. I mean, it, you weren't. Re- well, I mean, I guess it was kind of cool to be scared of Freddy Krueger, you know, or whatever. I mean, he was a cool, scary movie villain. Mm-hmm. And in this one, it's like he's not really cool. It's a real world bad guy. Yeah, like mm-hmm. I'm seeing shit in this movie about. <sighs> Uh, about a guy who comes and kills you in your dreams and we're going to uh, add a very real element to it, which I think, like you said, some people, it just hit people the wrong way. Well, I'm curious because here's the other, because this movie has to it has to have those those hairpin turns mm-hmm. in the plot. I did say that with a straight face. Um, <laughs> but the idea for a while that because the kids are dealing with repressed memories, they think <clears throat> and blame their parents, which is Connie Britton, right? Who yeah. we'll all remember from Sin- Spin City and Nashville, right? Was she on Nashville? American Horror Friday Story. Friday Night Lights. American Horror Story. Friday Night Lights and Clancy Brown for the Kurgan from Highlander. Pet Cemetery 2. Okay. Shawshank Redemption. Okay. Shawshank Redemption. The Clancy Brown are in this movie in thankless roles. Uh, Starship Troopers. They try to, con- you know, they the kids become convinced that the parents have killed an innocent man. Yes. Now, if it would have stuck with that, uh, you know, plot avenue, better or worse, because that gives Freddy Krueger, well, then maybe you can root for him, and he's a ghost, right? He's he's been unjustly uh, persecuted for right. something he didn't do. That would be kind of cool, honestly. Then he's like, well, fine, I'm going to fucking get revenge on the, all these you people who killed, killed me. me. Yeah. Yeah. Because... yeah, what the fuck do I have to lose now? Yeah. 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 Yeah, That's I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, we're not. We're not, not trying. We're, we're not trying that hard in this movie. I really don't like the end of this movie. They're, just, they're straight up like it? taking uh, elements uh, from Friday the Thirteenth movies and putting them in. So they go to his bunker, right. which they have no. They have no reason to go there. They can. He Freddy finds them wherever they are. They don't have to go to him. But they go to his bunker. They she have lays cover the memory to to get Nancy back in the I, headspace. I guess this is, it's, it's reaching. It's she, oh. she even says something about I found the sweater and I was just waiting for her to put it on and start calling his name like it's Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. And yeah. then she she put has a sweater in her hand and lays down on his bed. On his molester bed. Is dirty, yeah. dirty. Yeah, as you bed. pointed out, Michaela, probably the bed that she was molested on. Probably, yeah. but that's where I said that this movie was made by a fucking robot who, like, yep. watched the first movie and made a catalog of the stuff. But it doesn't understand anything about human psychology. Nothing at whatsoever. All. How they react to people, how they react to events around them. Nothing. These yeah. are not people. No. And then, okay, so what's so the? They're care. like automatons. On you know. Uh, yeah, I mean that exists in a, a beam of light on a movie screen. <laughs> what is the logic behind how she brings him into the real world? I did did not understand she that. She found it by accident. I think at one point in the in the the pharmacy, she yes. grabbed onto a piece of his clothing, oh, his sweater, and yeah. yeah. But I mean, all of these things. This really is like you know, if you, you you're taking the original story and trying to deconstruct it and then reassemble the pieces, mm-hmm. but some of those pieces only work because they were in a certain sequence or a certain context. Mm-hmm. And when you just try to reassemble it again, it's like, well, okay, you've reassembled it. Right. But without a soul, it doesn't mean anything. No. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, now you're just, okay, that happened. Yeah. The hand in the bathtub thing. Yeah. It's, it's there. But what does it mean? No, it, Nothing. In this movie, it has no context, no meaning. No. The, the sweater has no, it's like, well, it's an arbitrary plot point because we have to bring him into the real world so Kyle Gallner can cut his fucking throat with a, a paper cutter, cutter yeah. that when, he broke up. In the flashback when he was being burned alive by the parents and he 
in slow motion, <laughs> tore his jacket off to oh, reveal yeah. the sweater. Uh-huh. I was laughing my oh, ass off. I could so not handle good. it. That was slow a trailer mo. moment. That was a trailer slow moment. Yeah, it was. Oh, my oh, God. So good. I just remember the trailer was him running uh, down yes, the road and like, a- Kruger. And you're like, oh, my God, it's a nightmare in Elm Street. And then he was like, I'm Freddy Krueger. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I could not believe the slow-mo. So I was hot. like, oh, my God. That's what it looked like. It looked like he was like, God, it's so hot oh, in here. It's so hot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm wearing this sweater. <laughs> Uh, okay, the other thing that this movie uh, does, um, I guess to its credit, that's maybe original an original idea mm. is because somebody who wrote it was like probably Wesley Strick. I'm going to go with Wesley Strick. He <laughs> sat there and like, oh, they're, they're offering me Nightmare on Elm Street. Well, I suppose I should look up something about dreams. And he came up with the idea of the micro nap. Mm. Micro nap is explained what it is, how it works, and then... The entire rest of the movie deals with micro naps. Yep. What are micro naps? Uh, you're sleeping when you, even though you're awake. Yeah, because your brain is like, you've been up too long before coma, before it shuts you down for good. Yep. It gives you these like little micro naps. And That's those- how he's able to nap while he jumps into a pool. That's the best okay, one. We can't explain any <laughs> of the logic in this. That I guess that's their explanation for, right? Yeah. It's but they're literally going. It's dream logic. Doesn't. No, yeah. None of this matters. Yeah. yeah. Whether well, a guy has a dream while he's swimming. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You're just on autopilot at that mm-hmm. point. Okay. Yeah, that's how at sports work. Yeah. You don't have to think about it. You can go to sleep while you're doing yeah, it. Sorry. Yep. Because your brain is shutting you down. Because mm-hmm. I did the research. I read the stuff about the micro nap, and I'm putting it in the movie. Uh. <laughs> How they defeat him bothers me. Like how they pull him into the real world, cut his throat, and then light him on fire. What what makes them think burning him a second time is going to work? Because it's a physical being. This time. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He was a physical being got burned up the first time. Motherfucker still came back. But then he came back as a spirit. Then they pulled that spirit into the real world. And then they mm-hmm. burned it. But it turns out, Michaela, you're absolutely right. Because it didn't stop him. Because we get the world's dumbest ending where arbitrarily. We, we had to do the dumb stinger again. Yeah. We couldn't let how, it go. How many times can we say arbitrarily during this podcast when talking about this movie? I bet we could do it three more times and have it apply. Sure. Probably. We still have a little while to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But again, arbitrarily, the ending. Yeah. That, that ending it's in like, the first one was so unnecessary, and you have a chance to cut it off, and you still do well, it anyways. That's the worst part of the first movie, mm-hmm. is the very end. It ends, the first movie comes to a climax when Nancy says, I don't believe any of your shit, and he fucking tries to stab her, and that's it. Just stop the movie there. Mm-hmm. It does have a really bad ending that kind of the worst of dummy I've ever seen yeah. in a movie <laughs> it fouls an otherwise like perfectly good movie oh. this one tries to recreate that with a jump jump scared thing with right. a mirror and the but now gets- mirrors are a thing yeah. in this why is he in a mirror whatever why is he in a mirror Colin why not why because it's cool looking Sean it's a cool is it effect. that CG not cool looking if the effect had looked good it would have been cool none of the effects look good because I liked the way the claws came through her face right. and well, like one through her eye and stuff it's like, great for a 3D shot yeah but like the quality of the effects was terrible yeah if it had looked been Better, I would have liked it a lot. But more. these are scenes again that are more based on their visual, uh, you know, from the way that they're constructed and composed. It's more of a visual thing than it is like an effective, emotional, visceral, uh, you know, compelling. St- there's no story or plot or anything to it. It's just like no. boom, and then this happens, and then Rooney Mara, sc- Mara screams. We cut to black, and, and boom, done. We get strains of uh, what was it? Dream dream, 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 dream. What is that song called? We don't even know. Don't know. That, you know. All I want to do. That like Motown song, I, I, Dream. I have no idea. Is that Dream a Little Dream? No, it's not Dream a Little Dream. I have no, I'm not even going to look it up. Okay. Mm-hmm. This yep. it doesn't deserve it. Halloween it took, deserves it. Halloween took Mr. Sandman, so we had to find yes, another sleep-related <laughs> old-timey song. Yep. Yeah. And they couldn't do Sleepwalk, because mm-hmm. fucking Sleepwalkers took it. Yep. All Much right. better movie. So I tell you what, uh, listener, we have opinions. You've heard some of them tonight. We're going to tell you what we actually thought about this movie. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this is an odd, in, in case you didn't know. An odd freak uh, show episode, but we're going to go around yeah. the table. We're going to review this movie. this movie. Ooh. Well, it turns out, uh, listener, that um, all of you, every single one of you have seen this movie and have an equally strong opinion about it. This might be the most reviled film that we have ever watched on the Saturday night freak show. So we're going to read some of your mail 
And to do that, we're going to need the assistance of our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. And thank you, Igor. Thank you, Igor. Thanks. Look, he's got his little hat on. Oh, how cute. I wonder where his sweater's at. You're saying his fedora hat? His fedora, yes. He's mm-hmm. wearing his fedora tonight. Usually he's got that hat on that Mike, uh, that Sam Jackson wears. <laughs> but tonight he's wearing his fedora. <laughs> well, all right. Uh, <laughs> so listen, we had a uh, very full mailbag tonight. First of all, this is how you can uh, uh, join the Freak Show family. Write into us. We'd love to hear from you. You can find us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can find us on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us directly. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow us on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, Straw Dog seventy eight writes in and says, "You're my new favorite podcast." Oh, well, thanks, oh, thanks. Yeah, I mean, you don't know how much that means to us, a, right? I mean, that's that's a big compliment. Yeah, because you know how many podcasts are out there. Yeah, yeah. holy shit. I mean, yeah. you know, thank you. Th- there's like a lot of podcasts for even one subject that you're like, there's this many podcasts for this weird True. subject. So yeah, and there's True. tons of movie, yep. tons. especially the shit that we're doing mm-hmm. podcasts. Um, <laughs> nobody's so. nobody's doing this movie. Well, that's probably also true. We should look that up, actually. Okay, so about tonight's movie, A Nightmare on Elm Street, BT208 says, Hello, Freak Show. Hello. I've been turned on to your podcast by my co-worker, Jason Madsack. Ah. Hey, uh, Keeper of the Wall. Keeper, he's also the Saturday Night Freak Show historian. That he historian, is. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah, the Hall well, of good. Fame for those who are the Wall of Fame. We, I don't know if we had any. We didn't uh, put anybody on there, did we? Because did we figure out Clancy no. Brown? Has he been in? Uh, I don't think so. Right? Rooney Mara? No. no. Kyle Gallner has been in two. He was in Jennifer's Body in this. And Okay. Uh, anyway, BT says, BT. Uh, love the show, and I've been working through the episodes and have found some gems through this journey. This remake isn't the worst garbage remake or the worst remake in the big three of horror, but that surely doesn't make it a good film. Though I'm feeling strangely strangely nostalgic for this piece of shit. I can understand the nostalgia I, part, yeah. Sure. I think that's what drew me here tonight. It uh, does have that, like, mid-2000 stank on it. Yes, sure. it does. God, it does. Yeah. Yes, it does. Oh. Uh, Bill Hainer says, it's a night meh on Elm Street. I saw that comment. That was pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty good. Uh, Teresa Ann calls this movie pointless, boring, unimaginative, mediocre cash grab of a movie. Yes. Yeah. Grant Paris says, I think the original series was going to include the child sexual abuse. And then the studio or producer was like, no. So I guess my question is, is that addition illuminating or more interesting in some way, specifically to your own personal viewing experience? Uh, I mean, it was detrimental to mine. Hmm. Didn't help me. I, like I said, I appreciate the direction they were trying to take it with that, but they didn't stick the landing on it. Yeah, I guess I was not a fan of it. Uh, Chris Huddleston says, that's right, Sea Huds, welcome back, my friend. You said, my biggest issue with this one was the makeup. They went for a more realistic burn victim look, which wasn't scary or fun. No, it's just kind of, I, it just didn't look human, you no. know? It's the right way to go, but they just did too much. That I was, don't know. I like the pizza face. I like the fantastical well, I mean, elements. Yeah, I like that too. But if you're I'm deciding, deciding to like remake it and go in this direction, like I get that that's what you would want to do. Yeah, just too much. But it's it's kind of like, it's one of those things. I think uh, um, st- there's a quote from Stephen King. I'm going to paraphrase it here. To, you know, but somehow, like uh, too much, was it reality has a diminishing effect on a work of fiction, mm. where you know it's like it makes it uncomfortably realistic in some way that like it's not as uh timeless or mythic you know mm-hmm. the original freddy krueger is like a mythic character yeah where this one is very specific it feels yeah. like maybe that's okay, okay. um <coughs> pardon me Travis you, Legler. You, you sick over there, Colin? Oh, that's like coronavirus. Oh, Travis Legler says when I first saw the poster for this movie I was excited. Then I saw it. The movie makes it harder to enjoy the original. I'll take Freddy's Dead or Freddy versus Jason over this. At least Robert Englund always made me enjoy a Freddy movie, even the bad ones. That's true. Mm-hmm. It's fair. I, the poster for this was bad. 
Yeah. It was really bad. All the art for this movie is bad. All the art for all the Platinum Dunes remakes were kind of, maybe that was what was going on at the time, but the Texas Chainsaw is not very good. Well, I'm thinking of the original. It's like close up. It's Mm -hmm. all black with like his face. Oh, yeah. They're Mm -hmm. all really like blurry and out of focus and just kind of like muddy images. Yeah. For all the movies. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Oh, I, I like me some poster. Post- poster art, but these were all like, mm-hmm. eh, it's a black background. Is a thing kind this of. This one was just him with the like his gloves, his hands mm-hmm. like interlaced in front, looking mm-hmm. down. That's yeah. all it was. One little, yeah, yeah. one little knife. Yeah. Uh, Nick Siebel says, "Damn, this movie is straight garbage. From bad CGI Freddy makeup, the child molester narrative to the shitty ending, you just can't replace Robert England and expect a diehard fan base to just accept it." currently on streaming on netflix now i'm gonna have to watch this bullshit again <laughs> thanks saturday night freak show that's what we're here for here again go. doing things nobody other, nobody else would dare doing, do. doing the lord's work hopefully yeah. we don't cause like a boost in residuals for this movie yeah Probably. making everybody go to netflix yeah, yeah. yeah like we had a sudden resurgence jack hero haley all of a sudden gets a check for this he's like oh it's been a while since right. i've seen one of those we're single-handedly causing them to make a sequel to this <laughs> yeah. movie right now Oops. this is what we're doing oh no oh, please Jesus. don't pay to rent oh, on amazon no. Uh, no uh simon carter says it's a freak show drunk dial, so brace yourself. Uh, All right, here we go. I know. Do I have to do that? Okay. This pointless turd of a remake did absolutely fuck all with the premise. <laughs> but some creative use of modern special effects this could literally have gone anywhere in the dream world with the endless possibility for horrific nightmare scenarios. Instead, we got the movie equivalent of thumbing in a softy. <laughs> I don't even know if that <laughs> translates across the pond, but I'm sure you guys can figure it out. I can't even fuck this movie. <laughs> Thumbing in a softy? I looked it up. Urban Dictionary. Oh, uh, oh no. Do we want to know? Do you? No, I'll look it up later. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's, I'm going to leave that mystery for another yeah, time. You know what? We're going to leave something to the, uh, to, yeah. to the imagination. Thumbing in a softy. Uh, Michael Whitaker <laughs> says... Of all the reboots of classic horror franchises, I was bummed this one didn't work. I like Jackie Earl Haley, and I thought of him as a Freddy Krueger made sense at the time, but I think because that character requires so much personality, it's always going to be tied to Robert Englund. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's kind of what Sean was saying about, like, he's not really, like, just a blank ghost behind a mask, you yeah. know? Yeah, not anybody can play him. No, it's I, a I, think that's, I think yeah. that's it. It's him. You have to have he an angle. He is him. And he did have an angle, but and was it successful? Robert England loves doing it more than anyone else, too. Like, yeah. Well, that is like, his life. He is, like, Haley does the whole, like, I'm taunting you kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But this is her hands. England's version of doing the exact same, because he liked to also toy with his victims. I mean, yeah. that's part of the wickedness of, I guess, that character, you know? But there's something, I don't know. He's like... Robert England's like the the bully, you know, or something is always picking on you. Mm. Uh, Jackie Earl Haley is like, I don't know. How would you describe it? He's not whiny. He's just like, uh, I don't know. There's just not a lot of energy to his performance at all. You know, no. it's very low I energy. I found you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, Finding Cullen Milligan says Jackie Earl Haley does the best he can with the script. But other than that, you're in for a textbook example of the head assery that comes with a lot of horror movie remakes. There you go. Head assery is pretty great. I like that. (laughs) Uh, Jacob Kotner says this movie is a stain on the franchise and I hope it just disappears with time. What drives me the craziest is that it shares the same title with a brilliant classic just knowing that even one unsuspecting youngster could pick this up thinking that it's a real Freddy movie <laughs> drives me insane. It's pointless. I give this movie no <laughs> points and may God have mercy on anyone's soul that watches it. I could say more, but chunks are rising in my throat just thinking about this horrible <laughs> film. That person's going to lead who one is of those. That? Yeah, who is Jacob that? Jacob Cotner. Ah, he's sorry, gonna, dude. Yeah. He's going to lead one of those like... Um, bring all your like CDs here and we'll crush it with a steamroller <laughs> thing. He's going to do that for all the DVDs and Blu-rays of this movie. <laughs> uh, Jacob E. hosts, uh, it's Refund Theater, the podcast. Uh, oh. Check that one out. Uh, ben, Daniel Harris. Oh. Daniel Harris? 
Uh, Daniel. Oh, Daniel Daniel Harris. Harris. Ben Daniel Harris says pointless remake. It's not Jackie's fault, but I felt, but it just felt weak in comparison to the original. Well, everybody's like coming to the defense of Jackie Earl Haley. It's because we know he's good. We've yeah. seen him in enough to know he's good. Yeah, but he's not good in this, but okay. No. Nelson Nascimento says with some small exceptions, it's mostly a carbon copy mimicking key scenes from the original when there was no need for a decent attempt with interesting ideas that was never fully fleshed out. What could have been a dream movie was a, mostly a snooze fest. All everything he did in there. Dream. Wonderful. Kudos to you, sir. Well done. Stephen Hayes. I'm a mile away and I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Hayes writes in and says, I was quite hyped for this while it was being made and liked the sound of what they were trying to do with it. Unfortunately, studio meddling meant that a lot of the more fantastical dream elements and kills were replaced with more generic sequences that felt old hat. Mm -hmm. Is that true? I don't know if the studio, I, I, that I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if there was anything. I, 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 it doesn't I'll, seem I'll like a not. budget was a problem on this movie, no. right? You know what? I'll bet what we saw tonight was exactly what they wanted. Well, except for maybe a subplot involving the uh, prison cellmate. Yeah. The one guy. Yeah, there was obviously like there was something, something there. cut out there. Uh, yeah, that, that was cut to death. There was also, like, I wanted to, we should have seen more of him getting killed. Like yeah. in the real world, I don't know. That was that's, that was, it was a weird. weirdly cut scene. Felt something else was filmed and yep. cut out. No one got eaten by a bed in this one, did they? No, but they did I the, the, the explosion of blood from the ceiling, and she uh, fell onto the floor, and the blood disappeared. That was their shot at the. That's. I mean, it's no Johnny. It's no Johnny Depp in a crop top, you no, know. No, not much is. Well, Ryan Ryan Dooley writes in and says the worst. <laughs> what? Uh. Waste. <laughs> All periods in there? All periods. Yep. Okay. Love it. Jimbo Ice disagrees with everybody else. Uh oh. Dissenting opinion. Oh, uh, oh let's hear right. it. I'm, I, hey, I, I want to hear You got something good to say? Let me hear it. Jimbo says it was a hard okay. Wow. Two good kills, a few novel ideas which are instantly shrugged off, and a cast which basically sleepwalks through a thankless music video of a film. That's a positive review. They, right? Yeah, wow. <laughs> a a yep. thankless music video of a film is the gr is a great way to summarize uh -huh. it. Bravo, that is bravo. the best review yeah. that that movie has gotten so far. Yep. Okay, so two weeks ago we watched a movie called Tammy and the T-Rex. Mm -hmm. Grant Parrish also wrote in about that. He, had, uh, he said, Dinosaurs, Swans, Nev Campbell... Miss Richards gets to ride all sorts of fun things in the movies. <laughs> I saw that. That was very that's pretty good. Bravo. That's yep. a good one. That's bravo. Uh, Feline Fatal writes in and says that opening scene with the cheerleading dance routine and that early 90s cringeworthy music instantly reminded me of the 1992 Buffy the Vampire Slayer opening. I think this movie was kind of trying to be in the same vein as the movies like Buffy. I think so. Yeah. Holly said that as soon as she saw that when we were yeah, watching Ironically, yeah. while we were watching. Yeah. yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> Uh, Carl Reck writes in and says, I'm drinking hashtag Maker's Mark and I'm watching hashtag Tammy and the T-Rex from at Vinegar Syndrome before I listen to at Sat Freak Show episode on the movie. Nice. Awesome. All that's good choices. Get all are those being tags. Made. Yeah. That's how you do it. All, right yeah, there. That's it. That I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, Michael Kent says, uh, Tammy and the T-Rex was cheesy and campy or no cheesy and campy is a horror genre. That is always a treat in small doses. Where do you guys draw the line with this stuff? I'm a big fan of trauma films, and I wonder if Stuart Raffle, that's the director, mm -hmm. was high as a kite watching a nymphoid by barbarian in Dinosaur Hell from 1990 when he thought, this could work. You guys are the best podcast on the planet, and an absolute highlight to my week. Keep up the great work. Well, thanks. Thank you. Very kind. Colin, yeah. please say the name of that movie one more time. A nymphoid barbarian in dinosaur hell. Oh, uh, well, we know what Sean's next pick just, is now. Yeah. Spoiler alert it for is a, a month trauma, from trauma now. film. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that, so, mm, well, yeah. I'll skip that then. The Trauma's question not... is, where do you guys draw the line with that? So, so we're saying we yeah. draw the line with trauma. I'm drawing, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think, so. Yeah. <laughs> I you, think so. You know, if Vinegar Syndrome puts something out, that's where like my barometer is. Like, If Vinegar Syndrome says they're releasing something, I'm like, okay, I'll take a look. 
You know, all the porn that they put out. Well, no, no but of, like they, I think the way they had a when Valentine's they uncover Day sale something. and it was all porn. Yeah, yes, when they uncover yes, I something, I should say, like, yeah, right. like, um, like I know I didn't recommend Kathy's Curse, but like that was a thing that we discovered, right? right. Because yes. of vinegar syndrome, like, or hell comes yeah. to Frogtown. Yeah, exactly. Or when the they, Angel Collection. Yes. Yeah, exactly. All worthwhile discoveries. Yeah, yeah. Vice Squad coming. Drawing the draw. That's from Shout Factory. Yeah, mm-hmm. drawing the line at trauma. Yeah. Michael, yeah, we're drawing yeah. the line. I don't, I don't think I could do it. I, I, I have Thanks Killing and I never watch it because I'm just like, ugh, that movie. Well, ugh. we did do, we did, uh, for the trauma aficionados out there, we did do uh, Toxic Avenger and Class of Newcomb High at some point in in the past. You could b- go back and listen to those episodes. <laughs> did Monster in the Closet have any trauma connections? It feels like I it. I feel like it did, but it's been so long. Yeah. <laughs> listen Not to the, that episode, folks. Yeah. Monster in the closet. So no, coloring. I know. Thank you for sticking with us this long. And I mean, sincerely, we really appreciate. We do, Colin. You're writing him. Yes, Sean. Uh, hey, Colin. What did you think? Um, because I have no idea. Uh, I'm just. I'm wondering what you thought of tonight's movie, A Nightmare on Elm Street. <sighs> Sean, I mean, I got to tell you, I think seriously, <laughs> this was one of the most depressing uh, experiences that I've ever had. Here in the basement watching a movie. I know I've probably said that before. It feels like that. Well, those words have come out of my mouth. Sure. This is one of the <laughs> worst movies uh, that we've ever watched collectively as a group. I mean, it is. I, you actually said the word uh, that describes my feeling toward this movie and that it's soulless. Soulless. Right. And it's like, how does a movie have no soul? It's like, well, it has a cinematographer who, I mean, uh, you can see it, so it's lit, yep. you know? The lights are in the right place for, you know, creating, like, this moody uh, look. Does the mood fit the movie? Eh, whatever. It's this gritty thing that they were doing in, in that era uh, before, you know, this is the, the decently budgeted, probably this is, like, a $40 million movie. I would guess, like, $30 million. Or some shit up. like that, right? Before Blumhouse is like, you don't have to spend that much. <laughs> you know, you can do this for a lot cheaper. Um, it's uh, atrociously written. It speeds along from scene to scene, careening, one might say, from scene to scene, crashing <laughs> from one scene into another. Well, you don't get the momentum, the feel. There's a momentum to the movie, mm. right? Which is uh, generated by the editing and the shot cuts to something happening. Yeah. Every five minutes, there's Freddy Krueger shows up and basically does something. The music goes blam. And then we cut to, oh, oh, oh my God, it was, it was so terrifying. I mean, it, it's like the Joel Silver whammy chart, right? Or whatever. <laughs> but there's no investment in the no. characters i can't imagine anybody being remotely uh scared by anything that happens in this movie Mm-mm. i think what was it? it was jacob cotner wrote in and said i think the biggest crime that this movie does commit is that yeah i am afraid that you know because it's the most recent nightmare on elm street when you see a nightmare on elm street on your tv listing you know there's a movie available it's nightmare on elm street i've heard about that freddy krueger or something you click it this is what you're watching. And then you just. You're like, that's, that's a Nightmare it. on Elm Street. And that, and that does it. And yeah. that's, that'll stop someone cold right yeah. there. I'm, I mean, I think I'm, it feels like we're over the remake hurdle. I mean, to the, the, to the degree that we were super saturated with it. Uh, Blumhouse the, raises you a black Christmas, an invisible man. What was the other one? The, the craft, a Halloween, uh, all right, within coming. this next year. I think we're hit, uh, hitting the resurgence of this. Of the remake yeah. phase? Of the of the remake. Yeah, but now they're just remakes that have some connection to the originals. That's kind of the level we're going to now. Like Candyman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like Halloween. Yeah, there's another Blumhouse remake coming out this year. Yeah. Okay. So it's we've got like on. three Blumhouse remakes this year alone. It sounds like, well, and they're all from one studio. Mm-hmm. This is coming from a point in time where like everybody and their mother was doing it. It was mm-hmm. like that was the thing to do was to remake the horror movies from twenty years ago, which made me feel old because I was like, <laughs> these are the these movies aren't old. What are yeah. you talking about? Like you can watch them right now. Mm-hmm. This is how streaming has changed the world, mm-hmm. right? Because now you don't have to hunt these fucking things. It's not a fucking treasure hunt. No, not you at all. You want to see A Nightmare on Elm Street, 1984, 
You can watch it right now. I yeah, defy you, you to not find it. There. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to get off off your couch. So that kind of makes the idea. We had this discussion during the Pet Cemetery remake. There's no point to remaking movies anymore. You can just watch the old movie. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm missing the most important reason to remake a movie, which is obviously there's money to be made by some fucking producer in Hollywood who sits there going like, I can make a buck off of this. So, yeah, he just made uh, Platinum Dudes, gave him some cash because we rewatched it again. Thank you very much, Sean. A movie <laughs> that one of our uh, listeners said should probably just be forgotten about because yeah. it's fucking terrible. It's terrible. I mean, there's nothing. And no, I don't think Jackie Earl Haley, everybody's defending Jackie Earl Haley. I like the guy, right? Uh-huh. I, because I like other things that he's done. That's right. His Willie Loomis in Dark Shadows is sublime. But uh, that might be a joke. <laughs> Robocop. Anybody Robocop, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's so memorable in that memorable movie, Robocop. Right. Um, I don't think he's good as Freddy Krueger. His take is not better than England's. Nothing in this movie is better than anything that was done before. Uh, I hate it. I hate, 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 <laughs> hate this movie. Zero stars. I mean, there's really nothing. Okay, the, there's the thing in the hall where she runs into the blood poodle. Pool. I can't wait to read your letterbox review on this. Book. <laughs> it's gonna be zero. It's, I'm just gonna I regurgitate can't wait. this. I yeah. know, but like, I can't wait to see you have to like formulate this anger into words. You know, I don't, I don't know if he will because then he'd be like, I have to think about this movie again, yeah, again. in order to get this down. I don't think he'll do it. That's what Here's- happens when on Letterboxd, I'm like, well, I did that on the Freak Show, so I don't need to review it. And then I'm like, uh, I probably should go back. But you ever see those like really angry like one sentence reviews on Letterbox? Or sometimes those are fucking hilarious. Mm. Oh my. When people are in such a rage, they can't think past one sentence to say about the movie. And it's just like you can feel their hate coming through it. I got a Love sentence it. for this movie. Fuck this movie. Michaela, what'd you think of Nightmare on Elm Street? Uh, I'm glad you brought it, Sean. I'm not glad I had to watch it again, <laughs> right. but I'm glad you brought it because I think every once in a while it is healthy for us to all have a movie we know we can come into and just dump on and we're not going to hurt anyone's feelings. Yeah. And, uh, and it won't be an argument. Like no one's going to die on this hill, right? You know, so... It's nice to like be like, yes, I just get to go and like take the gloves off and really go at this movie, right? right? It's just to yeah. have a nice one where we're just like, yeah, let's go at it. A good <laughs> catharsis, let's, let's, yeah. Just like, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And get out there and yeah. let loose. And I feel like with most movies, even like even if it is like 95% of people agree it sucks, we're still going to hear from someone who's like, mm-hmm. no, I like that movie. This one, we did not fucking hear that even. We once. got a hard okay yeah. and that was it. Um, it's as good as it got. I'm not as personally attached to A Nightmare on Elm Street as some other people are, so I don't take this movie as personally, but even still, there's still no redeeming qualities, even if it's not personally attacking me. So it's, yeah, it's it's obviously a no. It's I mean, listen to the previous hour and a half to hear all the no's, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, it's not a surprise that Samuel Bayer never did another movie after this. Like, I'm sure it was profitable, but He's probably not still enough. money from it. Oh, yeah. yeah. But you know what the most depressing thing about this movie was mm-hmm. to me? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. I went into a spirit Halloween store mm-hmm. like not too long ago. Oh, no. And because this is the most recent, recent incarnation of Freddy Krueger, this is the merchandise Freddy Krueger. Oh. Well, but they do that with Halloween, too. Yeah, Halloween Hall- Halloween Resurrection and Halloween um, 6 are always like the the licensed merch mm-hmm. we get. Yeah. And I don't know why. They replace always. the old ones. Yeah. Like, so when kids go into the fucking store, Freddy Krueger is Jackie or Haley. You never see anything branded for the original <laughs> Halloween anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. I always it's, see Halloween Resurrection shit Yeah, anywhere. and Halloween 6, too. And, and like sometimes yeah. you'll see the Rob Zombie license stuff, but like you never see just... Halloween licensed stuff. It's always one of the shitty sequels, and I Last don't understand year I why. Saw Halloween two, Halloween two. Yeah, was. it's Trick or Treat Studios probably made yeah. that one, but they don't even have the Halloween one. They only have Halloween two. I don't understand. Whatever. I'm sure someone knows the reason for that. Um, it yeah, this movie like it's it's sad that it's not even like so bad that it's like an awesomely bad watch. Mm. It never crosses into being fun enough to be like a midnight movie experience, and that's sad because like. It's too dour and too brooding to be that. And I I understand why the molestation stuff bothers people. I stick by my hot take that it's because it makes Freddy unlikable to you. I think that's what it is. Um, I there are th- like I liked the cold open, but not enough to make any of it worth watching. So it's going to be a give me a hard pass, Sean. <gasps> hard pass. That's what I heard. Yeah. Hard pass. Hard pass. Um, oof, uh, what are we always saying? What's the worst cinema movie can? Uh... 
can do. Uh, what was it? The three Bs. It three like, like B, boring. It's just boring. Mm. <laughs> just, this is boring. Three times. Three times yeah. the boring. Three times yeah. boring. Three times the boring. Um, how? What? What a uh, what a waste. Um, you have. Uh, he, he lives in a fucking dream world. You can do anything, and it's the most boring version of that that you could possibly do. Um, uh, it's, uh, I mean, like Michaela said, listen to the last hour and a half, but it's, ah, what, what, what a pointless, just boring, shitty, fuck, it's exhausting. Um, no way. No. Uh, I brought it tonight cause I, I had forgotten about it and, uh, uh, I will never forget it again. Um, I'm going to make Holly watch this. She doesn't. She's not getting out of this just because she decided not to show up tonight. I'm gonna sit her down, uh, peel her eyes open, and make her watch this, and then record her hot take. Yes, of the movie. Um, but uh, no, this is an absolutely horrible movie. Um, it's uh, it's disappointing. Um, but yeah, you skipped the hell out of a Nightmare on Elm Street 2010. The only thing I liked one thing when Chris is in the body bag in the hallway and she does that kind of mouth open blood drip thing. That's the only thing that looked good in this entire movie. That's it. That's all I got. I'm sorry. It's definitely I'm so the wor- sorry. And we're it's definitely the worst Platinum Dunes remake, right? Oh yeah. I, I, I've been thinking about it, and somebody in the I, review yeah. said it was uh, wasn't one of the worst of the three, and I'm just like, I what one do you think is worse? Yeah. Well, Friday the Thirteenth is definitely better. Yeah, yeah, but Texas Chainsaw Beginning is pretty bad. Well, yeah. Pictures that's not, not a bad. remake though. That's like their yeah, own spin off. Yeah. Yeah. To the, yeah. Yeah, they kind of went down. I mean, like, Texas Chainsaw is not a good movie, but it has, like, a pretty decent, like, last 20 minutes. Yeah. You know? Friday the 13th has bits and pieces here and there, but overall, I don't like that one either. And I'd then, much rather uh, watch that, though. Over this? this? Yeah. Well, fuck oh, yeah. yeah. This is this yeah. dog shit. Man. I know. That's what I'm saying. It's the worst one. <laughs> it's the worst. But, I, I mean, worst. all of those movies, I mean, I assume that they are, for a generation, their touchstone you know, that's what who it's probably my Jason generation, is. Colin. That's when I was in that's high school. It. Yeah. Okay. So that's yeah. the, is that your Jason? No. <clears throat> Who's your Jason? Kane Hodder. So, yeah. Any of the previous okay. ones, probably. So you actually went yeah. back, but yeah. you're you know into yeah. horror and stuff. Yeah, I don't so that's know. What we hope you are a listener. Yeah. We hope you that you saw those movies and like I got to watch some of the other ones and oh they're better than the fucking platinum dune plastic fucking soulless. Remake pieces of shit. Um, I imagine what's going to happen to me one day is that um, I'm going to walk into my son's room one day and catch him in the <laughs> middle of watching this movie, and I'm just going to be like, I failed as a parent. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Like, yeah. I just like, walked in on him t- doing drugs. You're yeah. going to have a what are you watching moment. What are you, you doing? And then he's going to try and flip the he's channel like, real nothing, quick. Nothing. Nothing. Porn. Nothing. I was watching porn. Yeah. <laughs> it was all porn. It's like, are but, you watching 2010's sli- A Nightmare on Elm Street? But the yeah. slipcase is going to be sticking out from like under right. the edge of his bed, and you're going to be like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> There'll be another one by then. Probably. I swear it's not mine. I was holding it for a friend. <laughs> yeah, I was just holding it for a friend. I didn't mean it. It just it fell into oh. the DVD player. Yeah. It's just depressing. And I couldn't right. find the remote to turn it off, so I thought I might as well watch it. Right. Actually, you know what? There is a positive to come out of this movie. It makes me realize, like, what a fucking genius Wes Craven actually was right? like i mean we always say it but it's, it takes something like this to go like god damn that man knew what the fuck he was doing even yeah. when he didn't yeah. it was like that was a burst of creative genius and he did it twice yeah with that character in that in that franchise yeah yeah yeah, yeah. god damn it i know that motherfucker all right well on that sad note yeah, that's uh, a rest in peace next Craven. week we're gonna be watching a movie that's chosen by holly hey holly what are we watching next week? All right. Well, Holly has entrusted me with what next week's movie is. We're going to be watching a movie called Alone in the Dark. Now, it's not the one with Christian Slater. We're going back to 1982. She picked a slasher movie that stars Donald Pleasance, Jack Palance, Ooh. and Martin Landau All right. as All right. escaped Thank lunatics God. I was terrorizing to... a small town. <laughs> Reach through this yeah, microphone Sean and choke have her. A stroke. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need. We haven't had Ewe Bowl on the movie, and Sean is probably the person who will bring him. Uh, <laughs> what, is, what do you say? <laughs> Jesus, I've never been more insulted in my life. Uh, next week, so it's uh, Alone in the Dark. Next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, we hope you'll join us. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>